folks, JD here, and today we've got this. This is the Ishin EX1 dual GPS brushless motor quadcopter. Oh, I'm so looking forward to taking this up. All week I've been looking forward to taking this up. So, tell us a little bit about it. Well, four brushless motors, four self-tightening propellers, 1080p HD camera on the bottom of it right under here which just snaps in some modular design so it just clicks into place battery of 17 up to 17 minutes after a four hour charge that's quite long but still if we get 70 minutes out of it I'm chuffed nice little on and off button with uh, a nice little LED ring around here which pulses different colored lights as to whatever status the quadcopter is in four LEDs as well inside these great big yellow cones here they flash blue on the front green on the back uh, so yeah, all in all I'm really excited what about the transmitter though? Well, the transmitter is a beast. Look at the size of this. This has got probably the best telemetry screen I have ever seen on any any uh, transmitter. It kind of tells you so much information from amount of satellites, speed limit, uh, amount of satellites, longitude and latitude, your speed increase, low and high uh, modes as well, um, whether how high you are, your battery level, and so many other things. Nice little uh, analog sticks on here. I've tried them out a little bit just to see how they go, and I'm really impressed with how sturdy and how, how nice they feel you've got your photo and video buttons at the bottom here take off and landing as well the transmitter feels really quite nice it's a little bit plasticky but as long as it works fine then that's fine with me so let's take her up as with every GPS quadcopter the startup is a little bit finicky so what we've got to do is turn on the quadcopter quadcopters on transmitters on it auto binds there we are we're done and also we got a little this just started to pick terrain of all the times Look at that uh, GPS, look at that telemetry screen as well. This, is, I don't know, how, hopefully this is coming out really clear, but look at that, look at all, that. the detail you've got in this screen is absolutely incredible. So what I'm gonna do as well, is I'm gonna pop this on GPS mode by knocking up the uh, little button here up to the middle point. And it's at this point now that we can calibrate the, the compass by pushing these two analog sticks up until the blue LEDs start flashing on the front, which they are. There we go, now we've got green LEDs on the back, so we tip up the quadcopter until the camera is facing the sky, and then we twist like you would with any other quadcopter, trying to keep it um, as steady as possible. On. There we go, we've got flashing blue and green LEDs, therefore we are ready. Now what we've got to do is just wait for satellites. Four satellites already, just showing up here in the top corner. It recommends that you wait until you get to at least eight satellites before you you take off. So there we are, we've got six now. And now we've got the two LED, the two front LEDs on the quadcopter now locked blue. And now the overall quadcopter light here has changed from a red to a blue. We've got 11 satellites, we are good to take off my friends. So with this now, we can just unlock the motors. Okay, standing away a safe distance because this guy is very powerful. We can use a one a key button to take off and we should press and hold and up he goes <laughs> all right look at that beautiful absolutely beautiful holding at 12 satellites for the minute really really nice a little bit of wobble but to be honest that is just down to my calibration so let's take her out a little bit and see how she fares again I'm going to take her up a little bit not too high but I just want to get a feel for her and I just want to get a feel for this transmitter Okay, let's take her out. Let's fly her around a bit. Ooh, wow, corners very well. Corners left to right, right to left, no problem. Oop, a little bit of a wobble there. How about if you just stop her? Oh, there we are, engages the brakes, and then, boom, there's GPS swinging her back into where she last was. And there she is, being held. That's quite nice. Now, currently, we are in high-speed mode, as when you first get this quadcopter, it is set to high which is not something that I normally like. I normally like to step through the different different modes. So as we're on high already, what I'm gonna to want to do, uh, you guessed it folks, is I am going to want to change her into low. So with her being held there, let's click this one button in the bottom. Now we're on low speed. Oh, and that is gentle. Look at that. That is gentle, that is really nice. Let's swing around for a wide arc. Let's bring her around. Yes, that is lovely. Oh, I like that. Gentle low speed mode. How many satellites we got now? We've got 15 satellites.
Okay, so let's try return to home. So return to home is this button here. What you do is you click it down all the way. What's he doing? What's he doing? What's going on there? And we're on 17 satellites. So we have a, a good amount of satellites. We have a good, a good connection there. And I'm going to press this return to home. So if we push this all the way down, it should then take up to an altitude. And then it should fly down to us. That went stupidly high and didn't make any moves to turn around and come back to where my position is there. Let's try it again, just in case, like 18 satellites now, just in case there's something strange going on and I, I haven't uh, realised. So there we go, lights change, it should take up and now it should start flying over. Oh my god, how high does that thing go before it starts to move? There you are folks, I'm not moving it in any way. It's now controlling itself when it brings itself down. But good god, how high does that thing go? Right, we're at 45% battery on the quadcopter. It's bringing itself down really nicely. Sorry if this video, if this part of the video isn't coming out very well. Okay, I started... It doesn't sound as if it's still descending. Oh, it is. It's descending so slowly. Look at how slowly this is descending. Talk about controlled. It's going to hit my camera. And there we go. Well, this is where I took off. That's where it landed. That's really not too bad. Now, let's try and see if I can attach my smart device to this particular quadcopter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on my smart device. I'm going to hopefully connect to the Wi-Fi being blasted out via... There we are, I've already connected to it. Wonderful. Now let's open up the eSheen Fly app. Oh, it says device, no device. Now we've got an LED on the camera. Okay, well guaranteed then that is because the camera module isn't working. Right, okay, so with that in mind, luckily I brought a backup camera to use for such an, uh, an occasion. My run cam. Okay, now what I've done is I've attached the run cam. I have weighed the run cam on this quadcopter, so I do know it can take it and that all the blades, look at that are nicely proportioned and are away from the camera. Okay, take her out of return to home mode, back into GPS mode, unlock the motors, that's one thing I did forget. And now the motors are unlocked, let's use our one key takeoff. And you can see even with that run cam, she's not bothered. So now we should be still in low mode. No, it's automatically gone back to high mode. Okay, so let's take her up a bit. Let's have a little look. Oh, she looks so cool with that run cam on her. <laughs> right, okay, let's see how she goes. Well, so far, the Wi-Fi module in the camera is broken, so I'm going to see if I can get in touch with the supplier I had this off in order to get another uh, camera sent out to me. I've just, that beep you heard, I've just pushed her into low mode. I just want to take her around a little bit with this run cam for a nice, sturdy, steady flight. I'm so impressed with how this flies. Look at it go. The return to home was a bit of a surprise. I didn't expect it to hit altitude so high and then for it to come down so slowly. But it was such a nice descent that I didn't have to think, oh my God, are the, are, is any part of this quad caught the damage? Are the landing sprigs damaged? No, everything's fine. The rubbers on the landing sprigs are fine. Everything looks good. I mean, no test is without any particular, <laughs> no test goes always according to plan and unfortunately this is one that hasn't but at the same time it's okay because we have a way of getting some fpv off this guy it's just going to be brought to you by Runcam. and before any of you ask no i'm not sponsored by Runcam. i just really like their cameras oh look at him go i like this guy i like this guy a lot Oh, okay, into high mode. Down she goes, she dips. A lot more erratic on the turning. A little bit quicker on the on the acceleration as well, but not overly. I'm quite surprised. I really expected her to be, you know, flat out a hell of a lot faster. Oh, now she's hit 22% battery. So now she's going to take herself home. This is automatic return to home feature. 
there we go there's 19 percent so now she will take over as you can see and she will take herself home over she is she's directly above me this is where she needs to land right down here I may need to get a little bit close to that tripod again and this is where she's coming down oh that descend is so so graceful yeah we're at 18% battery 17 satellites oh yes I had heard that it has a uh, I had read that it has an automatic return to home feature at 20% it was good that it started to initiate at 22 to ensure it could get home and there it comes uh, run cam sitting quite nicely on top of it what do I think what are my thoughts okay let's start off with the positive as, as we usually do so the positive are that it is easy to calibrate easy to control auto take off and auto landing make it a cinch it's GPS absolutely flawless especially when you're on somewhere as open as this 18 satellites at one point that's perfect you can guarantee that when you let go of the controller it is going to be locked in place there was one time where when I was over in the corner where I had let go of the transmitter and it started to rock and then it traveled a little bit now I was a little bit perturbed by that it did it the once it hasn't done it since uh, now that could be because either the last position that this particular quadcopter um, recorded was that position it took itself back to uh, but at no point during the time that it was taking itself back did I feel in any way uh, shape or form that it was unstable not at all now this has got a ring uh, this has got a fence feature where it means that if you go outside of its boundary fence it will bring itself back in so that's every possibility what I had done I had gone outside of its boundary and it brought itself back in to a nice safe and steady position um, auto take off uh, sorry um, return to home oh well that shocked me totally the first time I stopped it going home and I brought it back down I was like no you're not doing that you're too high what are you doing as you know I fly for enjoyment I don't fly for height and when I saw it go up as high as it did, I thought, oh, right, I've lost it. But no, from this quadcopter's point of view, it has to make sure that it's at an altitude away from any, or any obstructions. Because obviously it's relying on, on me to pilot it. And obviously we have no obstructions, I don't fly with any obstructions. Um, so with this guy, when he, when he flew back and came back over, uh, then he had to be at an altitude in order to ensure that he isn't going to crash into anything either. Um, now when he landed, I've never seen such a graceful and, and smooth landing. Landed so, so gracefully. Obviously if I was on concrete rather than grass, it would have been a little bit better than actually landing landing on grass but fortunately the grass is really 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 short and it only came up to here so it wasn't going to be anywhere near those motors now the negative point well the negative point is that this particular camera module did not work um, now as far as I as far as I know I have tried to record video on this SD card if I can fish it out then I will say along the bottom that it is different if you're not reading that it's any different then it isn't different um, so what I'm going to do because this camera is modular I'm going to see about getting a replacement the quadcopter itself works flawlessly but obviously the camera doesn't for whatever reason now I'm going to try and see if I can fix it if I can't I'm going to get a replacement of the camera module only now I'm going to mark it down a little bit lower than what I use usually would do for a quadcopter of this calibre just based on the fact of that uh, little camera module not working did it overall ruin my flight enjoyment not at all I carry about nine different cameras on me at any time so uh, to, honestly for that to happen it isn't really the end of the world for me I think obviously from a consumer point of view yes the camera module should be working you should be able to control it via your smartphone and you should be able to uh, to do whatever you want to use in your FPV screen as you know using your smartphone as, a, as an FPV screen um, so it is going to be marked down on that as well. But overall, I, I really enjoyed, really enjoyed. But I do think that a little bit more QC testing would be probably better to ensure that no parts leave the factory where they are actually broken or not working. Transmitter. Everything you could ever want is on this. Auto take off, auto landing, take photo, take video, uh, return to home, GPS mode, indoor altitude hold mode. Um, it's it's just, oh, you can turn off fencing by holding this button in for three seconds as well, so it won't do what it did with me and fly back within the, the ring fence that it sets up for itself. Um, so many different buttons, but I tell you what, really, really good. Battery consumption was good, transmitter range was flawless. Now, my one concern is this, look at this. There is only a tiny little thing holding this FPV boom on here, and it doesn't feel stable. And when I put my phone in it last night just to see how stable it was before I do it on grass, it wasn't very stable at all. So, what I would say is if you are going to use this particular FPV boom, then just ensure your phone is stable 
when it's clasped in, it is. But the arm, to me, doesn't feel, doesn't feel very stable. So overall, I like, and I'm going to be using this a lot more. So, and I'll let you know as well, when the camera module comes in, we'll take it back up and test it again and see exactly what that camera's like. All right then, folks, so there we are. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD, you've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying.